Good morning, everyone. Let's turn to page 429. We'll sing Hark the Herald Angel Sings. Page 429. Uncle wrote, I wrote some of the wrong chords, but the same thing we practiced. Page 429. Hark the Herald Angel Sings. Hark the herald angel sings Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the sky Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day. This day is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I praise you, Lord, for bringing us safely from the east end of here to, to be with our friends from the west end that we have not seen for so long, but also to be in a place of worship, a place that loves you, a place that we see the children loving just as much as the adults, if not. Ask now that your spirit be upon, upon us. We don't ask you to come into this place because you were here before we even entered it. You're always with us. You stand by us. You be with us. I ask and thank you for all of these things in the name of Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend. Amen. 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 All right, as Mateo's getting the slides, I have a couple of announcements. Next week, we'll fix it down. Next week, Sunday, I want you to know this. Uh, we're having our um, Christmas potluck after the service. So if you can join us, it's going to be a great time if you could be here for that. Got it? Got it. So um, if you can be here after the service, we're going to have just a food fellowship after the main service and uh, bring some uh, dessert, bring 
Mexican food if you like. But uh, there's no pressure. Just come. Just uh, come and enjoy the time with us next week. Um, the 31st after the service, or uh, that would be the 30th, I think it is, Sunday the 30th, what we're going to do instead of um, having a, a midnight service um, on the 31st, the 30th after the service, that's a Sunday, we're just going to pray after the service, just have a quick prayer meeting, about 20 minutes. So if you could come join us for that, that would be uh, a good time. The theme of our church is striving for Jesus Christ. We're doing the best we can for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like how Uncle Mingo said, it's our best friend, right? And, and I want you to um, make an effort to do this this year. Last, well, this year our theme was faithfulness. Right? We, we hammered that in. We talked about Daniel and his faithfulness. We talked about being faithful to the Lord. This coming year, uh, I, I prayed about it. Our theme is going to be souls, praying for souls, okay? And uh, we want to be praying for Mauna Loa. We want to be praying for our island, Molokai. We also want to be praying for the state of Hawaii. And uh, we want to be praying for missions and, and more souls getting saved and, and discipled and growing in the Lord. So uh, keep that in mind and keep that in prayer. So we're going to pray after the service on the 30th. Just have a quick prayer meeting. Other than that, I don't have any announcements. Anything else going on in Tegelin that we know of? That's it. But the 23rd, uh, or that's the 21st. It's going to be Friday the 21st. Come in up. We're going to do a movie night over here. Movie night. So it's, uh, what did you say, 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock. So we're going to get here 7 o'clock. And then this Wednesday is going to be our last Wednesday night for this year. Okay? So then we're going to meet up again in January, the first week of January. We're going to continue with Wednesday night services. But this Wednesday is going to be our last Wednesday night. So if you can make it out for... Our last Wednesday night for this year would be a blessing. I know it's tough for some of you all, but if you could come, I know it's going to be a blessing to you. All right, Uncle Mango, you want to lead us in the next song? This is Uncle, uh, I'm, I'm going to give away his AKA. Uncle Stevens, we'll just say Uncle Stevens. I'm Uncle Philip Mango and his wife, Eliane. Right, you got it right? And uh, they're visiting from the East End, and um, he plays music at the hotel. But I asked him if he could come and join us, if they could come join us this Sunday and, and play music with us. And he talked to me and he said, Pass, I love the old hymns. I said, man, that's a blessing because I do too. I'm old school at heart. And uh, he said, um, I, I said, would you like to, you know, lead our church in some old hymns? He's like, sure, that'd be great. And I got him to choose a few hymns, and this is one that he chose. We're going to sing Holy, 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 and then right after that, we'll sing How Great Thou Art. Go ahead, Uncle. Up on the board. Now, can you get that middle light, the back light, so we can just sing? Holy, 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 just sing with us, please. Let's see.
morning. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. Thank you for this time that we can praise and worship you, Lord. I pray for the rest of the service. May it glorify and honor you. Thank you for the Son, your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and cleansed us for, from all unrighteousness and given us a relationship with you. So, Lord, I pray this morning that you would uh, guide the service, that you would bless the service. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Uncle has a few specials for us. Go ahead. You can share something. The other day I was reading something and it, it really hit me when I was singing the song just now, How Great Thou Art. You know, for, especially for our younger ones. They might not understand how great is God. Some of us, never, I, never understood, I never understood how great is God. How big is He? And what I read was a um, father telling his son. He said, you look up at the sky and we can do the same thing when those big jets, not, not, not Mokulele, but those big jets fly over. How big is that airplane? Oh, look how small, it's small. Now go to the airport and stand next to one of those, one of those 747s and see how big that is. But the only way to see how God, how big He is, is to get close to Him. The further away from God that you are, 
the smaller he gets, the smaller he looks in your life. And I know that because it's happened to me. Because it's Christmas time, Mom. Luckily, not luckily, well, yeah, I guess luckily, we lived in the mainland for a while and I got to see. You know, when we sing the song, How Great Thou, I see the stars, I see the rolling thunder. You know, Hawaii, we think we have thunder. It says, you know, my grandparents, they say, oh, he, God's moving the furniture. In the mainland, when you're in the Rocky Mountains and there's thunder, God is moving the whole earth. I mean, it rings, it rings your ears. It, it shakes the ground. And the same thing is when we think about Jesus. Pastor talked to God this morning. He became a man. He became a child. There was a few songs that have come out in the last few years, and I, I, I'm becoming aware that Molokai hasn't heard them yet. Or maybe they have, and they didn't realize it. So I want to share some of these songs because they mean a lot to me. When she laid here, he was still her little child in a city filled with strangers he was still her little child though the inn was full and the night was cold she laid She laid him in a manger. He was still her little child. When the angels called him Savior, he was still her little child. When the wise men gave him treasure, he was still her little child. When the shepherds bowed before him, and stars shone all the while. When the angels called him Savior, he was still her little child. still her little child when he spoke the people listened he was still a little child when he healed the lame and dying they followed him for miles when he grew in strength and wisdom still her little child when the people turned against him he was still her little child when they sh shouted crucify him he was still her little child when she held When she held his broken body, he was still her little child. glorified when 
she looked upon her Savior. So much more than just a child. This little 
Something tells me that he, she did know, though. I mean, I had to think about that for a long time, all the years I've been singing that song. Because the angel came to her. So there's no way that she did not know. But as a mother, she couldn't treat him any different. Old man playing Santa Claus Came into town like old Jack Frost Now he's handing out candy canes And smiles for free People scurrying with their lists Rushing around to buy those gifts That will end up The tree I'm sitting at this red light Looking at a manger scene Watching snowflakes kiss that Wonder what God wants for Christmas Something that you can't find in a store Maybe peace on earth No more empty seats in church Might be that what's on his wish list I wonder what God wants for Christmas I wonder what God wants for Christmas Something that you can't find in a store Maybe feast on earth No more empty seats in church Might be one on his wish list I wonder what God wants for Christmas What do you give someone Who gave his only son and what if we believe in him like he believes in us? I wonder what God wants for Christmas. What over oh, giving up might be what on his wish list. I wonder what God wants for Christmas. What kind of gift from you and me? More sister, more brother, more loving one another. Oh, I wonder. By now we ought to know what God wants for Christmas. I wonder what God wants for Christmas. More sister, more brother. Loving one another, oh, I wonder. But now we ought to know what God wants for Christmas. Guys, enjoy that. Yeah. It's a blessing. Uh, the book of Matthew this morning. Matthew chapter number one. I couldn't keep up. Chapter 2, we were reading the whole chapter number 2 in 
book number 10 and 11. And Uso said something that holds stuff up with me. He talks, it talks about forgiveness. I'll read it for you. It's back there. And I'll go to the main message in a second. The second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 10, the Bible says, For even that which is made during us had no glory in it. This is uh, chapter 3, Paul, chapter 2, verse 3 says, For when we forgive anything, I forgive also. For I, if I forgive anything, for whom I forgave it, for your sake forgave I it in the person of Christ, for Satan to t- get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Verse 12 says, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and the door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not but Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now, that first verse that I read, verse number 10, talks about forgiveness. And uh, this is a time of the year that people talk about forgiveness. And, and, and I want you to know that, that it's a trait of Christ. It's a trait. Forgiveness is a trait of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to have a forgiving heart is, is a very important thing for Christians to have, forgiveness. I, I, I want you to also see that sometimes, verse number uh, 12 and 13 talks about sometimes, God opens up doors, but doesn't want you to go through them. God wants you to uh, uh, look at doors, and he's going to give you opportunities to go through them, but, but look at what the, the Bible says, that uh, verse number 12 again. To preach Christ's gospel, a door was open unto me of the Lord. It was the Lord who opened up the door for him to go out and preach. But he didn't take that opportunity. Why? Because that's not the, the, the door that he wanted or God wanted him to walk through. But the Lord did leave it open for him. And I want you to know, Christian, sometimes the Lord gives you opportunities but doesn't really want you to take those opportunities. Maybe it's a test. Maybe it's a trial. Maybe it's something that you're facing. But but the, the main point is to have a heart of forgiveness in, all, in it all. That's what Paul was talking about. The book of Matthew this morning. Matthew. Teo, I'm going to ask you a quick favor. If you can go out and get Matthew Matthew. I want everyone to, to come in. And uh, you kids. Hey. Uh, I want you guys to pay attention. Remember, we have this at the stake. We've got a $25 gift card, a $10 gift card, a one single scoop of ice cream, and a medium float. How are we doing on that, Auntie Maddie? Pretty good? Okay, you have someone in mind. You don't have to say their name. Do you have someone in mind? Man, this fly is bothering me. Okay. Um, and so you you guys, I want you guys to not move around, and I, I want uh, Auntie Maddie to be able to be here in the service, but you guys have to pay attention for that, all right? Matthew chapter number 1, Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 20, the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 20, talking about the birth of Jesus Christ, we looked at this briefly this morning, but verse number 20, the Bible says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse number 20. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. The Bible says, Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is God with us. Oh, Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to be in church this morning. Lord, I pray that we listen to your word. Thank you for the beautiful music, Lord, that we were able to sing this morning. Thank you for Uncle and Auntie coming up. Father, I pray that you would bless Uncle Philip and uh, Auntie Leanna and uh, that you would bless the rest of this service. Thank you for uh, our regulars being here. Our our faithful pillars, Lord, in our church. Thank you for Uncle Fats, Uncle Boy, Lord, and their families, Father. Thank you for Auntie Maddie, Mateo, Lord, and his family being here. I'm grateful that Emma and Hina are here, Lord. I pray that you would bless them. Lord, help our kids to pay attention, not to be in a s- distraction for the people within the church. Thank you for all that you do and who you are. I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. The genealogy of Jesus Christ, Matthew number 1, shows us the genealogy of a king. Christ from his regal line. Royalty. You can trace Christ's line into royalty. Of Mary, the Bible shows us in Matthew chapter number 1. Starting from Abraham coming down all the way to Christ. And then you go to the book of Luke, which we looked at this morning, chapter number 3. It shows us the genealogy of Jesus Christ as a man. The legal line. So the first line you get is the legal line. second chance. Tamar was the castaway. Jacob was the supplanter. Rahab was the harlot. And Christ is described in Scripture as the second Adam. He wasn't, he wasn't the first, but he was better than the first. The Bible shows us in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45 that the first Adam came to life. The second Adam brings us life. He brings us life. Christ has seven titles. In Matthew number 1, chapter 1, verse 1, we see that he is the son of David. In um, Luke 1, 31, he shows us that Jesus is the Savior. Jesus means Savior. Uh, Luke 1, verse 32, says the son of the highest. Uh, another title of the Lord Jesus Christ is the son of God. In Luke 1, verse 3, we have Matthew 1, verse 16, Christ, the anointed one. We have jo uh, uh, Jesus. In, in Matthew 1, 21, it's, again, it's reiterated. And Jesus means God saves. And uh, the last title we see here in verse number 23, it says, And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Matthew 1, 23. God with us. What a wonderful thought. And I want to preach to you this morning on that thought. God with us. If you are a child of God. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Here's what you need to know. God is with you. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Uh, Abraham 
Lincoln had debated for about eight hours with another man. And uh, this was before he became president. And after the debate, he was walking off the stage. And a, a man yelled out, Souls, we're going to win because God is with us. Mr. Lincoln, you will win because God is with us. Abraham Lincoln turned to the man and pointed at him. And he said, Sir, I'm not concerned whether God be with us or not, but mainly that I be with God. That I be with God. So if you've trusted the Lord as your personal Savior, be assured of this, the Bible says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God will never leave you, Christian. And here's what I want you to know. The promises of God being with us. Number one, letter number one, if you're taking any notes, the secret of a Christian joy is that God is with us. Okay? It's the secret to a Christian joy. A man once wrote, try to get a hold of the great fact of our Lord's presence, and you will see the results flood from it. Um, the King of Heaven shows me grace every day. That is a remarkable thing. I am a child of God. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Joe Henry, how old are you, son? Six years old. I'm sure if Joe Henry were to travel to New York City, and if he were to walk in the middle of New York City alone, without a friend, without a companion, without a guide at six years old, he might be frightened. He might be afraid. He might be nervous. He might be uh, he might be confused. But if I were to go with him and if I were to hold his hand, and I don't know New York City as well as I should. I've been there uh, all my life. But if I were to hold his hand and we were to go on some of the streets and some of the avenues, if he had a friend in his hand, I'm sure Joe Henry would enjoy going through New York City because he had someone, someone who was a little familiar with the area. Now I want you to know that life's Life's troubles and life's stormy seas are painful. Life's troubles and life's stormy seas are disheartening many times. But you don't have to travel alone because Christian God is with you. The secret of a Christian's joy is that God is with you. How many of you have been to the movie theaters alone? How many of you have been to a dinner alone? And I'll tell you this, it's not a fun of going with somebody. He said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Draw an eye unto me, the Bible says, and I will draw my hand to you. I want you to know the secret of the Christian joy, the secret to understanding um, uh, what joy is, is understanding that God is with us. Number two, I want you to know this, the reality of our relationship. Uh, I mentioned this verse this morning. The Apostle Paul says, uh, uh, this is a faithful thing and worthy of all expectation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Now here's the reality of our relationship with Christ. We do not deserve a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't deserve his companionship. We don't deserve his friendship. But sometimes I say this, Lord, you saved me. Lord, you struck me. Think about that. How many people can be a stop sign or a red light? We don't know red lights at all. How, how many people can be a stop sign? How many people can come in the way of a life, you in life, and the Lord has kept you on a day-to-day basis. The Bible says He has saved us, He has kept us, and lastly, I want you to understand, I want you to know that He uses you today. He has a calling for you. I spoke about that this morning. He has a will for you in your life. Uh, there's a lot of people that commit suicide or that um, kill themselves or uh, they, 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 they take their own lives, and you say, why? Wow, because they don't realize the re- uh, the, 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 of our relationship with Christ. But Almighty God, as, as people said this morning, Almighty God wants a relationship with you. He was born in a lowly manger, in a simple manner, to a woman, uh, uh, to a working stone. Uh, he, he grew up with common clothing. He had a humble studentship. Notice that, that Christ, the creator of all the universe, learned, he learned from the rabbis in the synagogue. He, he uh, was born with a poor man's income. He had a, a rental car, if you would. He borrowed, he borrowed a donkey to ride into the city. Uh, he had a rich man's grave, and uh, he became the son of 
Christian, let me assure you this, that you could stand before Almighty God, that at 3 o'clock in the morning you could pray to Almighty God, and He is there listening. Watch this, Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 16. Hebrews 4.16, the Bible says, Let us come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy to find grace to help us in time of need. A mission to those who are not Christians in 18, uh, and, and, and in 1812, the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions was created, and uh, they sent out their first missionaries uh, to the non-Christian world of India. Guys, they got together. Samuel Mills, uh, who was the most influential among the hates that group, uh, directed mod the modern missions movement and played a role in the founding of the American Bible Society. Um, in its 50 years, in its first 50 years, the ABCFM, which, which started from the Haystack Prayer Meeting, sent out more than 1,250 missionaries. Most of them were from small towns and farm villages of New England. The missionaries reported, uh, reports were printed in the Mission Herald and the magazine of the American Board established in 1821. For many Christians in, the Ameri in America, the, mission her the Missionary Herald was their window to the world. They started printing out movies, TV uh, stuff, uh, radio, rapid communication was sent out through the Missionary Herald. And in 1961, the American Board emerged to form the United Church Board for World Missions. And after 150 years, the American uh, Board had sent out 5,000 missionaries to 34 different fields. And it started by five people realizing that God is with us. And they can go out to any part of the world and know that God is with us. Of that, I talk about him a lot. My favorite missionary that went out as a, uh, his name is Adoniram Judson. He went out as a missionary to India. He got rejected and stayed in Burma. Only a handful of converts. But what he did was he printed the Bible from English to Burmese, and it became used as the textbook to teach people in Burma how to read in English. From that, thousands, thousands of souls have come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, we say, uh, as someone said at the store, hey, Pastor, tis the reason for the season. I said, hi, huh, Uncle. You mean, tis the season? Tis the season for the reason? He said, no, I'm pretty sure it means the season to the reason. I was all confused, and I said, man, we're jumbling up the words. But today's season is, is realizing that Christ be with us. 
if we accept him as our personal Savior. Amen? I, I want you to know, whatever it is, uh, the, the Lord wants a relationship with you, and the Lord being with you, no man can be against you. Let's close with this. I want you to look at the verse again. Matthew chapter number 1. Let's read it all together. Christian, I want you to know it's our secret. It's our weapon. It's our relationship. That God be with us. Matthew chapter number 1 and verse 23. Matthew 1 verse 23. The Bible says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive or shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and, thou shall, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is being interpreted God with us Father thank you for this morning thank you for that truth thank you for salvation that you've given to us freely Lord thank you for that free gift Father that, that you would give up your own uh, place in heaven to come down to be with mortal men and give him an opportunity to be with you, Father. So help us to understand that, to know that we, we can be your children. Lord, I pray this morning that if there's anyone here that doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior, that today will be the day of their sal uh, salvation, Father. Lord, I pray for the rest of the service. Thank you for all the kids that came, Lord. Thank you for the special music, Lord, that was played. Thank you for... Uh, giving us the opportunity to be in church this morning. I pray that you would use us, Father, throughout the week. Thank you for a beautiful church building. Thank you for the, your people that you've brought here this morning. And Lord, I pray that that this Christmas, the focus will not be on our gifts or the things that we can give you, but the focus would be on being grateful for what you've already done for us. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Lord willing. God bless. Canada or